You cannot mention or hear the word banjo without thinking about Earl Scruggs. He was a banjo pioneer, a trailblazer. He created the modern bluegrass style banjo as we know it, Scruggs style banjo. And on today's show, we're gonna go ahead and ignore all of that because you'll be learning seven guitar lessons from this banjo great. Hey TAC family, welcome to episode 228 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show. This show is designed to inject your guitar journey with a weekly dose of fun, focus, progress, and inspiration. On deck today are two questions from TAC family members. One involves acoustic amplification, and the other involves a specific technique while playing the blues. I'll answer those questions in just a little bit, and you're gonna see what guitar lick the TAC fam is working on. It's a boogie blues lick in the key of A, entitled Boogie Woogerton. And of course, your weekly dose of acoustic news awaits you, which includes a Canadian guitar, a release date for a much anticipated album from a guitar hero of mine and much, much more. But first, grab your guitar, not your banjo, and let's learn from the late, great Earl Scruggs. I'm super excited for you to learn guitar from a banjo great. Now, as we go through these lessons, I'll be referencing some videos of Earl's playing. If for whatever reason you don't see one of these videos, it's simply because of copyright. I'm gonna do my best to make sure all the videos are included so you have the best experience. Okay, on to the lessons. Earl Scruggs guitar slash life lesson number one is respect and reverence. Now, Earl Scruggs invented a style of playing the banjo, the Scrugg style, the three finger Scrugg style of banjo that was adopted by pretty much every bluegrass player to ever touch the banjo. That's pretty amazing. He's sitting in the top spot in the Mount Rushmore of bluegrass banjo players, but he also held great respect and reverence for all other players. Case in point, at the 1971 Camp Springs Bluegrass Festival, Earl was joined by all of the hot picking banjo players at the time. They all played the same song, and what he said before they played sent shivers up my spine because it did show great respect and reverence for the other players that were expanding on the style that Earl created. Thank you very much. That really fills my heart, heart with joy. But I, I did want to say one thing. Thank you. And guys like this, this is what keeps me going, my boys who work with me, and, and you people who keep preaching, and, music and uh, I just don't know what to say except I'm, I'm picking with some guys that plays a tremendous amount of banjo. Don't underestimate anybody up here. Uh, man, they're great. Let's pick a team and get out of this. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Earl Scruggs guitar lesson number two, switch it up. This lesson is why today's show exists. Earl was most associated with playing the banjo. He likely was the most comfortable playing the banjo. However, he had no qualms about picking up the guitar and playing it at a jam. In fact, I found a great video of him sitting there playing banjo and he sporadically swaps instruments with another fella at the jam and it just was a cool exchange because Earl didn't even think anything of it. He had no ego, he just handed him his banjo, he grabbed his guitar and on they went playing a song. Here's the video. Let's swap chairs. I want to hear you pick a team. Yeah, okay. Right. Let's see. Is this chair big enough for you? <laughs> <laughs> Grab a couple chairs for that. <laughs> What's going to take? First of all, try Crip Creek. I have it. <laughs> Earl Scruggs lesson number three, shrink the guitar neck. Now I'm talking about using a capo here. Because Earl Scruggs was in a bluegrass band, when he would play guitar, there was another guitar being played by Lester Flatt. And to make Earl's guitar stand out, he would use a capo and different chord voicings to really pop, to almost add what, what sounded like a different instrument. Let me go ahead and give you an example and then we'll look at Earl doing this in action. If I was to play a simple chord progression, G, C, D, G, it would sound great. It would sound just like this. Cool, awesome. Well, if you're in a band and there's another guitar player and you also play this, it's just gonna sound like two guitars playing the exact same thing. 
And here's where Earl introduced the capo magic. Earl would capo much higher, play the same chords, but in different voicings. So what I'm gonna do is capo here on the fifth fret. I'm gonna play those same chords. They're different voicings. They're gonna look like different shapes, but they are the same chords. And you're gonna hear how much of a different texture it actually adds. Here's how that would sound. So automatically, it almost sounds like a different instrument. Here's a great example of Earl doing this very thing. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Earl Scruggs guitar lesson number four, learn from the masters. And specifically, I'm talking about Earl Scruggs adaptation of Maybelle Carter's guitar style. Maybelle Carter was known for her Carter scratch style of playing the guitar. Here she is on the Grand Old Opry show playing Wildwood Flower. Pay special attention to how she drives the melody with the bass end and supports it with chord strums. Now you're gonna hear Earl do that exact same thing on the song Jimmy Brown, The Newsboy. He's capoed way up high, like you just learned, and he's gonna be playing the melody on the bass end and supporting that with strumming the chord. It'll sound something like this. Earl does it a lot better and a lot smoother. Here he is. Earl Scruggs guitar lesson number five, technique crossover. Earl would take the techniques that he used on the banjo and cross them over to the guitar. And it worked pretty darn well. Let me show you three different examples. We're gonna look at the forward roll, the backward roll, and the basic bluegrass banjo backup. Here's the forward roll. And what I'm talking about here is just a picking hand pattern. It goes thumb, index, middle, thumb, index, middle, thumb, middle. Here's how that would sound. Now let's take a look and see how that would sound on the guitar. Pretty awesome translation, right? Okay, back to the banjo. Okay, now let's look at the backward roll. The backward roll is just the opposite of the forward roll. It's another picking hand pattern. Middle index thumb, middle index thumb, middle thumb. Here's how that would sound. Now let's grab the guitar and see how it sounds there. Again, a pretty effortless crossover. Back to the banjo. Now we're gonna look at a banjo backup technique commonly referred to as the oompa. This is found in any bluegrass ensemble with a banjo and it fits a very specific rhythmic layer and it just so happens to work awesomely on the guitar as well. And Earl just so happened to use it on the guitar. Here's how it sounds in the banjo world. And now for the guitar. Earl Scruggs guitar lesson number six, control your dynamics. Earl was a master at this for two distinct reasons. Number one, he played the banjo, pretty much the loudest stringed instrument in existence. Number two, they played around a single microphone. And because he had the loudest instrument, he didn't want to overwhelm the other instruments that were playing. So if it was his turn to solo, he would turn up the volume. If he was playing backup, he would greatly reduce the volume. And here's an awesome example. Here he is kicking off the song Mountain Dew, and you're gonna hear him nice and present in the kickoff. And then when the singing comes in during the verse, 
he shrinks into the background and you just hear some nice delicate banjo. Here it is. <laughs> Here from me is an old holler tree where you lay down a dollar or two. You go round the bend and you come back again with that good old mountain dew. Oh, they call it that old mountain dew. Now, this is something that you can practice on guitar, whether you're finger picking, flat picking, strumming, it doesn't matter. Conscious awareness of your dynamics is crucial. So you're not always at one level. You don't always want to be loud. You don't always want to be soft. You want to build that muscle so you can fluctuate in between depending on the musical situation. And an easy exercise to practice this is to strum a simple chord and do so as loudly as you can and then quickly move it to as softly as you can. Let me go ahead and give you an example. Now the key is when you do that, don't fluctuate in tempo, just fluctuate in volume. Okay, on to lesson number seven. And this is a huge one for anybody playing a musical instrument, but we're talking guitar here. Earl Scruggs guitar lesson number seven, tensionless performance. Earl Scruggs, Earl Scruggs was capable of some absolutely fiery banjo breaks. We're talking speed and we're talking, you look at his fingers and you're like, wow, how is that happening? Because his fingers don't look like they're doing all that much. Earl Scruggs was a master at not holding tension. If you look at his shoulder, it wasn't scrunched, he wasn't hunched. If you, look at, if you look at his hand, it wasn't tense. If you look at his fretting hand, he wasn't holding on for dear life. He almost had zero tension, and that is what allowed him to play fast. Here's an example. He's playing an absolutely rip and break on the song Earl's Breakdown, and he looks like he's just out for a, a Sunday walk around the neighborhood. Earl's Breakdown. <laughs> This is an awareness that I want you to have every single time you play the guitar. And tension can come in many different forms. You can clench your teeth, it can be tight in your shoulder, your elbow, you can have a death grip on the flat pick, you can have a death grip on the neck of the guitar. And if you notice yourself holding tension, do yourself a favor, stop, take a deep breath, roll your shoulders back, shake out your hands, and try and mitigate that tension as much as possible. The more conscious you are of it, the more of a chance you have to remedy it, okay? And you're gonna notice that it actually inhibits your playing. The faster you try and play something, the more tension you can hold. And if you hold that tension, it'll actually slow you down. So try your best to relax. I know it sounds a little bit foo-foo, but it's true. It can have a drastic impact on your playing. That was seriously so much fun, and I hope the little injection of banjo didn't have you running the opposite direction. I do have a question for you though. Did any of those lessons surprise you? Did they help you? Did they make you think any differently? Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. It's time for your Tuesday Tack Guitar Lick Challenge. Go ahead and grab your guitar and get ready to boogie. Each day within Tony's Acoustic Challenge, we rotate through the five essential categories of guitar improvement. On Monday, it's a technique challenge. Tuesdays is a guitar lick challenge. Wednesdays, an improvisation challenge. Thursdays, a rhythm guitar challenge. And Fridays, a chord transition challenge. It is Tuesday. The Tack family is working on the guitar lick, and here's what they're working on today. I hope you're ready to boogie because your Tuesday Tack Guitar Lick Challenge is entitled Boogie Woogerton. Yes, the musical theme within Tack this week is using kind of boogie rhythms to liven up your playing, specifically in the blues realm. And the lick you're gonna have a look at today is in the key of E. But what we're gonna explore here in just a little bit is how to take this lick and use it for other chords by modifying it only slightly. It's gonna be really cool, but first you need to hear the lick. So here's how it sounds. 
a cool kind of, again, boogie infused blues lick in the key of A. Now, before we go any further, for those of you wanting to learn this note by note, go ahead, TAC fam, log into your account. This is your challenge for today. Go ahead and click start challenge. Once you get it under your fingers, move on to the play long video, pick a speed that suits where you're at today. And don't forget to click on the tab icon in the lower right hand corner that'll allow you to pull up the tab right next to the video. Okay, so usually when I do this during the show, I try and show you how to use this lick in context. Today I'm going to do things just a little bit different because I want to, I want something different in your little guitar geek brain, your big guitar geek brain. Sorry about that. I want something different to happen in your guitar geek brain. You know, usually you learn something from tab or what have you, and it is what it is. But I want you to start thinking, how can I use what I learned over other chords? So again, just so it's fresh in your head, the lick for today sounds like this. Now that starts on an open A string. This is a key of a lick. This A string, this A note happens to be the root of this lick. So what would happen if you change the root of this lick to the low E string? And you played the exact same thing, but instead of it spanning the A, D, and G, A, D, and G string, it would span the E, A, and D. Here's how that would sound. It sounds pretty darn good. And the cool thing is, it works over an E chord. All you did was shift the string locations. The string, yeah, I guess the string locations. You took the root, which was the A string, moved it to the E. Played the same exact thing physically, just moved it to a different set of strings. And now all of a sudden, it became a key of E blues lick. I guess not necessarily key of E, but a lick that would work over an E chord if you're playing some sort of boogie blues. You can also do this with slight modification to make it work over a D chord. And that would sound like this. <laughs> Hold on, let me get it right. <laughs> you, have to, you have to make a subtle, a subtle change for the B string. So here's how that would sound. Okay, but the cool thing is, is you're taking roughly the same idea and applying it to different strings, changing the root so that it works over a different chord. So with learning one lick in the key of A, we also modified it to work over an E chord and we also modified it to work over a D chord. So essentially you could play a 12 bar blues in the key of A using just the same lick. You'd have the part over the A chord, the part over the E chord, and then of course that part over the D chord. think about that B string again, but you get the idea. So as you go further with this lick or other licks that you learn, I want you to always be thinking, have a little uh, red light go off in your guitar geek brain that says, how can I apply what I'm learning to maybe a different chord? Can I do it? Try it. What's the worst that can happen? It doesn't work. So what? That's okay. At least you gave it a shot, which brings me to one final moment. One final thought I want to share with you. And that is trying your best is good enough. Trying your best is something that you should celebrate. You know, when you sit down to play the guitar and you try your best and maybe things don't go as planned, maybe you don't get something exactly the way you wanted it to, but you tried your best, that's good enough. You need to take a second and celebrate the fact that you brought it to your guitar playing session. You brought a good attitude and you tried your best. I think a lot of times we can walk away from a guitar playing session in defeat and we think, ah, oh, I didn't get what I wanted to get. I didn't get that song the way I wanted it to sound. I didn't get that chord transition, you know, fill in the blank. And we feel negatively towards that playing session. But if you tried your best and the outcome was what it was, that's good enough. It's okay. You can come back to it tomorrow. It's not going anywhere. You're not falling behind. You're not getting ahead. You are exactly where you are and your best is good enough. Let's go way back to episode 212, where I talked about maintaining your guitar routine through the holidays. There were two questions left in the comments that I just had to answer. Here's the first one. Paul Van Hooklom says this, can't find an answer to this question anywhere. So hoping you can help. 
So my chain has at least three volume controls, guitar amp and effects pedals. LR bag session and equalizer makes four volume controls. What is the best way to set all volume controls for best clean acoustic signal? My gear is a Breedlove acoustic guitar with LR bags element under saddle pickup into a Hendrickson Bud 10 amp into an LR bags session and equalizer. This is a tough one, Paul, because everybody's setup is a little different. So just kind of not knowing the ins and outs of your setup other than the general signal chain, I'll recommend the following, at least my approach to it. Whenever I look at an acoustic guitar signal chain, I want all of the gain set up front. Okay, so there's a difference between gain and volume. Gain is how much the signal is amplified and volume is how loud the signal is. If you put the gain up too much or have too many gain stages that are too high, your signal will be distorted. If it's just all volume, then you're just gonna have a really loud signal. And that might distort the speaker, but that's a totally different ball game. There's signal distortion, there's speaker distortion. We actually don't want either, but what we're really trying to mitigate here is signal distortion. So here's how I would approach it. I would say the first thing in your signal chain is what would control the gain. You want optimal gain in that portion of your signal. From there on out, you can minimize the gain that you add and just use volume to keep sending the, the signal down the line. I hope that helps. I know that's a maybe overly simplistic answer, but just think of it as this. The first thing sets the gain. The rest of the, the devices or pedals in your chain allows the signal that's already optimal to continue down the chain. Again, I hope that helps not only you, Paul, but others who are having some uh, pedal and gain issues in their acoustic signal chain. The next question comes from Todd Johnson. And this one was really cool because uh, it was about a specific playing style. Let's dig in. Todd asks this. Todd asks this. I liked the TAC Guitar Lick Challenge segment today. Minimalism when playing the blues. That's what That was the topic of that particular lesson. I was practicing that challenge in a loop last night. I was wondering if you, could, if you have any easy songs you could recommend in the Mississippi Hill Country Blues style for us TAC members. Great show. Well, first of all, Todd, thanks for watching, and I'm glad you dug the Mississippi Hill Country Blues style. It is a very minimal style. One song that I'll mention is Jesse May Hemphill's Streamline Train. And I think I actually referenced that song in that episode. So I thought I should actually give you another song to check out that uses minimalism and kind of a, a almost a droney uh, type sound throughout the entire song. And that is a song by Robert Belfour entitled Pushing My Luck. I just want to go ahead and, and offer you up a quick sample because I think it just goes to show that you don't have to be flashy. You don't have to play a bunch of notes. You just have to play the notes that mean something to you. And in this case, it's not a whole heck of a lot, but it has a huge effect. Uh, here's Robert Belfour playing that song, Pushing My Luck. Time to head out to the East Coast and check out a guitar snow from Bledi Morava. I hope I said that first name correct. Uh, Bledi lives in Worcester, Massachusetts, and here's what he has in his guitar snow. I'm holding a 2021 Taylor 224 CEK Deluxe Special Edition with natural, not glossy finish. A 2020 Taylor 414 CE Limited with sinker redwood top and rosewood back and sides. A 2017 Taylor 712E 12 fret with Lutz spruce top and Indian rosewood back and sides. A 2019 Taylor 814 CE V class with Sitka spruce top and Indian rosewood back and sides. A 2014 914 CE... A 2014 914 CE with a Sitka spruce top and Indian rosewood back and sides. A 2021 GS Mini Koa in open D tuning, thanks to you. And not in the picture is a 2014 Taylor 614 CE with torrified Sitka spruce and maple back and sides. 
You know, uh, Bloody, I was thinking, one of the guitars that you might really enjoy or might consider adding to your guitar snow is just, just a Taylor. Just maybe just one Taylor. Uh, <laughs> of course, I'm just kidding, Bloody. That's a heck of a lineup of Taylor. Some awesome guitars in there. And I want to thank you so much for sharing your guitar snow with us. If you're sitting at home watching the show and you want to share your guitar snow on the Acoustic Tuesday show, well, I want you to. And here's how. I want to propose to you a win-win-win scenario. I want to feature you on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Yes, I want to feature you and your guitar snow, or you and your Acoustic Tuesday merchandise. Step number one, go to TonyPolacastro.com forward slash shop. Once you're there, pick out your favorite guitar snow shirt, your favorite Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, get it shipped directly to your door. Step number two, once your merchandise arrives, go ahead and put it on and take a picture of yourself, either just wearing Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, or if you have a guitar signal shirt, take a picture in front of all of your guitars. And then once you're done with that, step number three is to upload your picture at TonyPolacastro.com forward slash shop. There's a link right on that page. Click it, you can upload your photo, and boom, you'll be featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show. Win number one, you get featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show. Win number two, you get some cool snazzy Guitar Geek merchandise. Win number three, the biggest win of them all, all proceeds from the TonyPolacastro.com forward slash shop are being donated to Guitars for Vets. You get featured in the show, you get cool new shirts, cool new merchandise, and you help out Guitars for Vets. Win, win, win. Okay, back to the show. It's time for your weekly dose of acoustic news you can use. And first up on my list today is a little bit of a continuation about Earl Scruggs. For those of you who were inspired by today's lesson and you want to do a little bit more digging and you just so happen to want to go on a Guitar Geek vacation, head to Shelby, North Carolina and visit the Earl Scruggs Center. Yes, it's a museum dedicated to Earl Scruggs. It has incredible, incredible displays. And while I haven't been there, I've gone on a couple virtual tours and it seems incredible and it's definitely on my Guitar Geek destination list. Maybe it's a Music Geek destination list because he's really more of a banjo player. But as we learned in today's show, you can learn guitar from him. Anyways, uh, here's a quick news report on the Earl Scruggs Center that may just get you awfully enticed to make an in-person visit. Well, the Earl Scruggs Center is a museum and cultural center that tells the story of Earl Scruggs. And of course, he is the man who changed the world with a banjo. And he was from Cleveland County, about six miles from where we are now, in a little town called Flint Hill, a little community called Flint Hill. And he is the namesake for the center, but it tells his story as well as the story of this place he came from and the, the cultural traditions and, of course, music being a big part of that. The first thing visitors will see is the Scruggs family instrument case. And this is sort of the crown jewel. There is a prototype banjo that Gibson made that he owned. And then there is a banjo that is one of five in a series called the Earl. And we have number three on loan to us from Gibson. Now, Earl's was actually number one. We don't have that here, but we do have number three. And it's a beautiful banjo. And then there are other banjos um, and instruments in that case, including the banjo that Earl learned to play on that belonged to his father. Get you enticed? I don't know if something can get you enticed, but hopefully that news segment enticed you to want to make an in-person visit. And if you just so happen to make an in-person visit and you want to report to us guitar geeks, do so in the comments below. Maybe you've already been there. If that's the case, let us know how it was. Okay, on to the next item. Oh, this one is an exciting one. Molly Tuttle and Golden Highway have announced a release date for their new album, entitled Crooked Tree. The album will come out April 1st, and I don't believe this is an April Fool's Day joke. I am so excited for this album because, well, for two reasons. Number one, it's Molly Tuttle. Number two, they released a song off of this album, a new song. A new single was released off of this album, the title track, Crooked Tree. Here's just a little snippet. Oh, can't you see a crooked tree? And last, but certainly not least, if you've ever wondered what a Canadian guitar looks like, it looks a lot like this. Yeah, I found this on Your Guitar Sage's Instagram. Eric Andreas, you've probably run across him before. Phenomenal guitar player, a great teacher. And I had to say, 
this this made me laugh so hard because I have a deep love for Canada, Canadian culture. And when I saw this, I thought, of course, it's a bunch of Sherwood PMP 5030s cut up to form a guitar. That is indeed a Canadian guitar. And on that note, I think it's a great time to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show for today. But first, let's take a sneak peek into next week. And next week on the show, we'll be looking at 10 of the best Guitar Geek YouTube channels to subscribe to. Yes, we're gonna be living on YouTube next week for the show, well, which is where you can actually catch the Acoustic Tuesday show. It's, it's a match made in heaven. Remember, you can catch the Acoustic Tuesday show every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. right here on YouTube. Thanks so much for joining me today, and please do remember this. Your guitar success, however you define it, is directly related to your guitar routine. So please invest the time in developing your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every single day that you play. You might even be playing a Canadian guitar. Whatever guitar you're playing, make sure to have fun with it. Okay, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek. Guitar Geeks Unite, and I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Be nice and play guitar.